Hey guys, I'm Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can control futures in Scala. So here I am in my development environment where I created an object here to which you can attach a main method if you want to play with this code yourself. Now, as usual with the other Rock the JVM videos, I recommend that you code alongside me, or if you want to get back to the scenario that I'm going to discuss, just refer back to this video. So in this video, I'm going to address the problem of deterministic futures. You probably know by now that futures are inherently non-deterministic in the sense that if you create a future, let me create a future future. Let's call this a future as future. And uh, let me import future. And uh, let's just return a value, for example. And uh, because we want to run a future, we need an execution context to do that. So I'm going to import the implicit one. So import Scala concurrent execution context implicits global just to have a thread pool on which we could run this future. So if I created a future such as this one, you know that the value inside 42 will be evaluated on some thread at some point in time without your control. So futures are inherently non-deterministic. Now, here I will speak to the following scenario which often comes up in practice. So imagine you're designing a function of the following kind. Let's define a function called give me my precious value. And let's say you have some kind of arguments like your arg of type int, and let's say you return a future of string. The types here don't really matter or inconsequential. I'm going to implement this as question marks because I'm going to implement that towards the end of this video. So assume you want to implement a function which takes a bunch of arguments and returns a future containing a very precious value. And uh, this function depends on a service which looks something like this. Let's assume we have a object called my service. And this object is implemented as follows. Let's define a method called produce a precious value, which gets an argument of type int. So let's say we have the arg as of type int and re uh, returns a string. And let's assume that this function is completely deterministic. So if you have the argument int, it will produce a string of the following kind. Let's assume we have the meaning of life is, and let's inject, for example, the arg divided by 42. So this is one part of the service implementation. Let's also assume that this service has another method. Let's call this submit task. And this receives a type argument, let's say a. And uh, let's assume that the submit task function takes two argument lists, one that actually receives an argument. Let's call this actual arg of type a and a function from a to unit. And this will return a boolean. And uh, let's implement this as true. And with the assumption that this submit task works in the following way, the submit task will take the argument, and it will run the function on that argument at some point in time without your control. So this will run the function on actual arg at some point. Good, so let's recap the scenario. This is your target. So you are a developer who wants to implement this function and what you're given is this multi-threaded service. And this is a given. So this is your target and this is what you're given. And this service has two APIs. It has a production function which is completely deterministic and it has a submission function which has a pretty terrible API because this function will be evaluated on one of the service's threads and you cannot get back the returned value from another thread's call stack, which is why you have this pretty, pretty terrible API. So let's assume this important service is also impossible to change for various reasons. For example, if you have API breaks and uh, if this service is used by a large number of people in your organization, it's very hard to change this API.
And uh, in other words, the production logic is completely fixed and deterministic, but what's not deterministic is when the service will actually end up calling the production function. So what implication does this have? In other words, this scenario forbids you from implementing your target function as, for example, future with my service produce a precious value with my arg. This will be wrong. And that is because spawning up the thread responsible for evaluating this function is not up to you. It depends on the service. So you cannot spawn the future yourself. So you will need to depend on the service and return a future string. How would we do that? Introducing promises. Promises are some kind of a controller or a wrapper over a future. So here's how it works. First of all, step one, you create a promise. So I'm going to create, let's call this my promise, as a promise of string. Promise has a type argument that will contain a value that I'm going to fill it with. So this is step one, you create a promise. Then in step two, you extract its future because I mentioned earlier that a promise is a wrapper over a future. So I'm going to say my, val my future as my promise dot future. Then in step three, consume the future. So after I've extracted the future from the promise, I can then use it as if the future already contained a value. So with the assumption that it will be filled with a value at some point, I can then do, let's call this further processing as my future, and then I can do whatever I want with futures. You probably know that already. So I can do, for example, map underscore to uppercase, for example. So this is how you would use the future extracted from a promise. Now, in step four, which I'm going to write in a different block, you need to pass that promise to someone else, probably a producer of the value. So we could say, let's call this I'm going to define an async call, which takes a promise in the form of a promise string. And this will return unit because I'm going to say promise dot success with a value that I care about. For example, your value here, your majesty. And in step five, I would simply call the producer and I would say async call with my promise. What will this lead to? If I call async call with my promise, then this function will fulfill the promise with this value. When the promise then contains this, this value, then the future will be fulfilled with this same value automatically. So how can we use promises in our service scenario? I'm going to take the target and move it down so that we can use the promises accordingly. So here's how I would implement this. First, I would use step one. I would create the promise. So I'm going to create a, let's call this the promise as a promise of string. Then for the consumer, I would then return it. So step two, extract the future. So I would return the promise dot future with the assumption that later in step three, someone is going to use my API method. So step three will be outside. Now in the middle, I'm going to invoke the producer. So I'm going to invoke step five, I'm going to call the producer by calling the services submit task. So I'm going to call the following. I'm going to say my service dot submit task. And I need to pass in my argument because that's how the API was designed. So I'm going to pass in your arg and the function that will be later executed on the service on one of the services threads at some point. So x colon int arrow, and then I will invoke step four which is the producer logic. So I'm going to create the precious value that I want. So I'm going to invoke the deterministic production function. So let's call this 
precious value as my service dot produce a precious value with x the argument that this function will be invoked with and then I will fulfill the promise so I will say let's call this the promise dot success with the precious value so if you have been following along with the scenario in uh, question this function will be executed on one of the services threads and so this whole logic inside this x colon int and the code that I've highlighted here will be executed asynchronously at some point on one of the services threads but as soon as the promise is being fulfilled with the precious value the consumer in step 3 here will be unlocked automatically with the precious value that the service created so this is how you can make the connection between a consumer and an asynchronous producer so this is how we would apply this to our target scenario So we create a promise and then return its future at the end for whoever wants to consume it. And in the middle, we submit the function which will be evaluated at some point, which is otherwise out of our control. And at the moment, the service produces its value. And then at the very end, it will fulfill the promise, which will automatically fulfill the future for the consumer to use at the end. So this is how we can leverage the power of promises to create controllable futures, which can fulfill at the moment of our choosing. So the promise class also has other methods such as failure or try success and try failure and more. So if you want, you can check out the promises API. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <music>